Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, it's December 2nd, 2018. I've been out here in the workshop for the last couple of days uh, taking some of the uh, scrap uh, polyisocyanurate uh, foam uh, insulation boards and uh, installing those in between the studs uh, in the, uh, the shop, uh, for the shop wall to increase some insulation. Now this material, uh, the insulation board, the polyisocyanurate, is probably over 40 years old. It was uh, reclaimed from a high school <coughs> structure and it was ultimately uh, sold on Craigslist and I bought several loads of it and stored it for a while. Some of the material before it got to, before I picked it up on Craigslist had been rained on as well. Uh, been out in the elements and uh, been stored. Uh, it, it was in a building that may have had birds in it as well uh, in the structure. So the material uh, isn't safe to be handling without using some sort of respiratory uh, protection. So that's just one thing I wanted to mention. So these, this is one of the uh, the units that I've used for uh, for a few years, they work pretty well. I don't like them because they're so big and bulky. Uh, this week I started using one of these uh, simple ones that you see people on motorcycles wearing or or in movies burglars <laughs> using. They work pretty well. They have uh, a replaceable inner filter in them. I'll put a link in the description below to an Amazon affiliate link where where I picked one of those up. Should be wearing eye protection as well. I had a bit of a problem the day before yesterday. I had one good pair of, of safety glasses that were anti-fog uh, safety glasses. But when I was uh, putting some cath uh, wheels on uh, one of my workbenches, uh, I didn't realize the top wasn't sealed, what wasn't attached to the frame of it. And so when I picked it up to put the casters on it, uh, the darn tabletop uh, work, workbench top fell over uh, and really scratched up my safety glasses pretty badly. So I don't have those to wear. So, but when working with with older materials, now uh, this polyisocyanurate isn't foil face. This actually has like a paper fiberglass reinforced. So those things we want to keep out of our eyes and keep out of our respiratory system. And certainly all of the mold or other contaminants that are on the surface of it are something that we want to be aware of. So even protect working inside of the shop when I'm cleaning up, I'm trying to wear uh, safety protective uh, gear. So I just wanted to mention that. Now I'm using lots and lots of uh, scrap material from the other building projects, the insulation product, product, uh, projects that I've been working on for the last few years. So I've got lots of ends of sheets. So uh, these are four by eight sheets. So maybe some of the panels were only seven foot long that I needed. So there'd be a foot left over or uh, there'd be uh, pieces that were on angles where they'd go into a, uh, into a valley or into a hip. Uh, some of the pieces were broken when I got them. Some of them got damaged when the wind grabbed them uh, when I was uh, doing the other projects. So I saved all of the insulation because I knew I'd be fitting, cutting these down and fitting them in between uh, these panels. I'm going to walk over here for a second and show you an example of some of the uh, pieces that I've been storing in here for the last few years and these are the ones behind me. So they range in thickness from one inch to, in some cases, they're, they're, they're over a foot uh, thick. But I've got lots and lots of these uh, pieces. And uh, so one of my jobs is to go ahead and use the table saw and the miter, uh, compound miter saw to cut the pieces so that I can fit them in in between each one of these uh, studs. Now these are two by six, two by six uh, stud walls, so they're five and a half inches, about five and a half inches uh, in depth, or five and a quarter. <coughs> and uh, and they aren't exactly 16 inches on center. Uh, when the gentleman did this for me, uh, I've discovered afterwards that some of them are 14 inches, some of them are are uh, 17 inches, so I've got uh, spaces between 14 inches in between and 16 inches uh, the insulation. So I can't just rip a whole bunch of uh, 
of insulation and fit it in here. And those long panels, that, those long pieces of insulation that were from the sides of an eight foot sheet, I'm not going to be standing up likely uh, vertically because there's more of a chance of them popping out. I try to really get them in quite snug. Now I'll say this, polyisocyanurate with these rigid foam insulation boards, they're going to expand and contract. So that's something you have to accommodate. So when I'm building a building and I'm putting up uh, sheets of this insulation board, I'm always putting on two layers because when they, when they contract, there's going to be an, uh, a potential air infiltration space between the edges of the sheets that you're putting up. And you never want to uh, have your seams or your edges of the insulation on top of each other. You want to stagger the edges so that you're creating a, a thermal and air barrier, uh, if at all possible. So, uh, but one of the things I do do is, uh, since I'm going in three sheets th uh, thick in here, so each one of these sheets is one and a half inches thick, and, uh, and I'll stagger the seams so there'll be three layers in there. So no, uh, no two seams will overlap each other. I want them at least a half an inch apart, the seams. More if I can make that happen. And uh, so I clean out the spaces, uh, put them in layer by layer. And if I have larger pieces, they're the ones I'll put on the outside. Now, ultimately, there's going to be insulation on the outer surface, on the inner surface of this wall as well. And, uh, and then there'll be another two by four structural frame that'll go there that will ultimately be where I put my, my drywall. And, uh, and that's where the, where the electrical, all of the materials, plumbing and electrical uh, supplies will go through that two by four wall or just behind it. So yes, I do use lose some square footage of this building as a result of doing it this way. I don't recommend doing it this way, but if you're uh, redoing a building like I am here, that's one way of super insulating the building. One thing I do want to make sure that I say, especially this day and age, so recently there were some uh, horrific uh, uh, forest fires in California, and, and these are recurring events. Uh, as our population increases, we're expanding into wooded areas that, uh, and on hillsides that, uh, that pose certain uh, natural um, dangers, if you will. So, and since I'm talking about using polyisocyanurate, rigid foam insulation, two materials, if I were building a, a structure or, or modifying an existing structure in a fire prone area, uh, such as in California, I would not be using rigid foam insulation, polyisocyanurate, because that is flammable and it gives off noxious fumes, d deadly fumes as well. So that is not an insulation I would be using. I'd be using uh, fire resistant materials on the structures that, that I'd be building in those areas. So uh, rock wool would be a very good uh, insulation that doesn't burn on the outer surface and you could completely envelop it just like I do with the uh, polyisocyanurate, the, this, this uh, rigid foam insulation boards that I'm using. So you could completely wrap the house with rock wool all the way, way around from, from ground level up to, the, uh, to the, where the roof attaches and completely in, encapsulate it. Then on the outside of that building, I certainly wouldn't be using vinyl siding, which is very flammable and, uh, and very dangerous and not environmentally friendly. And, uh, and I'd be using something like either a stone face or uh, like hardy board, a cement board. Yes, they're, they're, uh, it's not the most environmentally friendly, friendly material because of uh, the, the, some of the mining practices that are done and the, and the carbon dioxide uh, that's given off into the atmosphere as a result of that. But structures that are, are, that are built in fire uh, predisposed areas, I, I think it's irresponsible to be using materials 
that are flammable uh, that can take right off as well. So there's certainly uh, if design elements that are site specific based on the, uh, the potential threats. So in this part of the country where I live here, the threat of a fire coming through this area like a forest fire, although it is possible, it is very low on the list. Ice storms, snow storms in this area. Some places are more predisposed to earthquakes, tornadoes, hurricanes, uh, flooding, all of those things. So when, we're, when we have a piece of property, those are, are elements that we need to be, to be thinking about. Yes, we want to build the most energy efficient homes and uh, and like our home is is a passive solar home and these buildings are becoming more and more airtight as a result and so we need to consider what are the potential off gassing what are the potential uh, risks uh, and we want to mitigate those risks as much as possible so I'll show some GoPro footage I don't know how well it's going to turn out of uh, me taking pieces fitting them in and uh, placing them in, into the areas. Now when we get down to the really small end cutoff pieces or the little triangular pieces that are left over afterwards, they're going into, uh, into bags and those will be forms of insulation that will go in above the ceiling uh, in my garage and that's the only place that actually has an attic like spot. And so that's a good insulation, uh, all those scrap pieces to keep them from going into a landfill. So uh, always trying to think about the materials you bring on site, like all the wood that we bring on site here. Um, if we use it and reuse it, and I, and I may use uh, material that, boards that I've gotten from somebody else, someone else's uh, site, I pull the nails out of it, I'll use it, if it's good structural material, I'll use it in the buildings like I've, I've shown before in the root cellar. And, uh, and let's say uh, there are materials that, that aren't suitable for that, I may use them for concrete forms. When they start to decompose, they end up going into who culture beds, uh, or I may end up chipping them as well. So trying to think about how we can get as many uses out of each element that we bring onto our properties as well. Think about what is the, uh, the disposal, uh, what's the environmental impact as well. So I'm getting pretty wordy here. So uh, I just thought I'd post a video uh, talking a little bit about the uh, polyosocyanurate, why I'm using it. <coughs> and why some people in certain locations shouldn't uh, use it and, uh, and the, some of the safety issues when you're working with this material wearing appropriate eye protection and uh, respiratory protection as well. So there'll be uh, some GoPro footage showing me putting some of this material up and, and I think that's about it. If you thought this video was of value, please give us a thumbs up. Feel free to ask questions, uh, leave comments. Uh, you can tell me about your, some of your experiences where, where you live and some of the, uh, the elements that you're considering when you're uh, rebuilding or building a new structure as well. Thanks so much for watching, folks, and have a great day. Bye-bye now.